Our next guest claims that there's over a million jobs awaiting in the energy sector. How do we tap into those? Let's find out. Welcome back to Get Connected. I'm your host, Con Jackson. Jack Gerard, he is the president and CEO of the American Petroleum Institute. A survey was just released. He's going to share the results with us and give us some trends that are happening in the industry. Like hopefully the gas prices are coming down. Well, Jack, welcome to Get Connected. Hi, Con. Well, Jack, we're certainly excited to get connected with you, but first and foremost, what's the most exciting part of your job? Well, I enjoy working with the American public, and particularly right now, our focus on job creation and putting Americans back to work, and that's the number one priority of the oil and gas industry today. Well, certainly given your passion, I'm glad you're leading the Institute. Now, probably the hardest question we'll have for you today is, do you use regular or premium gas, and why? It uh, depends. I have a large family and so we try to operate as efficiently as we can as uh, we move our children back and forth. I uh, have two young adopted boys and they like a little room in the car so normally I'm an unleaded uh, hybrid type user. Well sign me up Jack. I am a regular guy too. I do it for the price. But given that oil prices are not at their all time high, why are we still seeing such high prices at the pump? Well gasoline is by and large a function of the price of crude oil about 70 percent in the gallon of gasoline or per every dollar that we spend on gasoline is the equivalent of what it costs to buy the crude oil to eventually refine it, process it, and put it in your gas tank. So if you look closely, the price of crude oil tracks very closely with a gallon of gasoline. So the key to this is to bring adequate supply to the marketplace with the expectation that the price of crude oil will come down. And that's why we're focused on producing more of America's oil here that we could refine here with the hope that you bring that supply to the marketplace and it will help level the price of gasoline. Well, I know all us consumers hope those gas prices continue to come down, but let's turn our attention and the reason you're with us is this new exciting report that was released. Tell us about the findings. Well, today the oil and natural gas industry supports 9.2 million American jobs. And the study released just last week shows that if given the opportunity to produce more of America's oil and natural gas, we could create another million jobs in the next seven years. So what we're encouraging the president to do is to take action to open up areas to produce America's oil and natural gas with the hope it will help us with our economic recovery and create an additional million jobs. You know, Jack, certainly great information, and you have a wealth of knowledge even before the survey came out. So what actually surprised you the most? Well, there's two other components of the study that uh, are very significant. In addition to creating a million jobs, the study shows that that activity would generate over $800 billion to the federal treasury. And at a time that we're struggling with deficit and debt reduction, that's, that's welcome news. But we've got to produce the energy to put people back to work, to create taxes, to generate royalties from energy production, to achieve that $800 billion uh, injection into the federal coffers. So that's the second component. The third piece that often gets overlooked is our energy security. What this study shows is that over the course of the next 15 years, if we expand the development of U.S. oil and natural gas, coupled with what we bring in from Canada, we could be self-sufficient here in North America, meaning that we wouldn't have to import outside North America to satisfy our energy needs. So we think it's really a triple win. First, you create a million jobs. Second, you generate $800 billion to the Treasury. And third, you make us energy secure by allowing us to produce our own energy for the benefit of our people. You know, Jack, as we begin to wrap things up, where can our viewers go to learn more about the report and what findings are in there that we can push forward to make good changes? Well, if you'll go to our website at api.org, there you can find the complete report. You can find summaries of it, executive summaries, and, and uh, other materials that support it. This is a great report, and most importantly, it shows that with the right energy policy, we can put a million Americans back to work. These are great paying jobs, the type of jobs we'd all love to have. So we're hopeful the administration will take action as part of their efforts to restore the economy and look no further than America's oil and natural gas industry to help them out.
Well, Jack, we're certainly glad you joined us, but before we go, we have to address the BP oil spill. What lessons were learned there, and what is the industry doing to make sure that it never happens again? Well, the industry obviously has focused like a laser on our practices, on our safety operations. We've developed a number of new standards that we're deploying across the industry as a result of that unfortunate spill. We take our responsibility seriously. We recognize we have the trust of the American people to be allowed to develop these resources, and we're going to make sure we do it safely and cleanly in the future. I will say when you put it in context, we've been operating in the Gulf of Mexico for over 65 years. We've drilled over 42,000 wells there, but this one unfortunate incident has got us refocused like a laser to make sure our practices are the best in the world, that we protect the environment, we protect our people as we produce the energy that the nation demands. Well, Jack, one thing's for sure. We're glad that the petroleum industry has your visionary outlook. Thank you for sharing the report with us and continued success. Well, thank you, Con. Good to talk to you. Certainly exciting news that if we tap into the resources safely and encouraging, we can bring prices down and give people more jobs. So we'll have to see what comes out of it. I hope the government's listening. We'll be right back on Get Connected. Thank you so much for watching. Are you tired of negative news? We are. And that's why we're creating a movement. By keeping it real. With what you need to know. It's more than what's happening. It's bringing hope back to our lives. So go to contv.com and join our movement. <laughs>